On the pond, Niner Heavy, ATIS is Alpha. Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be discussing about the two-step thrust application procedure that is used for takeoff. We'll look at the recommended FCOM standard operating procedure for it and the additional procedure that is required in case of tailwind or significant crosswind conditions. We'll also see why the aircraft engines accelerate asymmetrically at takeoff and what could be done to avoid it. Now, let's start with it. To ensure that an aircraft's engines simultaneously accelerate during the early stages of the takeoff roll, the flight crews must wait for all engines to reach the stabilization step before advancing the thrust levers to command takeoff thrust. If the pilot flying applies takeoff thrust directly from idle without observing the stabilization step, the engines may accelerate at different rates and this will cause an asymmetric thrust condition, which may be difficult to counteract and could lead to a lateral runway excursion event. Ensuring a symmetric thrust increase at takeoff. To avoid this potential strong thrust asymmetry, the FCOM SOP for takeoff provides a procedure that requests pilots to apply takeoff thrust in two distinct steps. With some additional guidance for certain aircraft operating in the case of tailwind or significant crosswind conditions. Now, let's go through the two-step thrust application procedure that is used for the takeoff. Firstly, here it shows the engine display when the thrust levers are at idle. Then the thrust levers are set to the stabilization step, that is 50% N1 or 1.05 EPER. When both the engines are stabilized at the stabilization value, the thrust lever are then moved to the takeoff thrust. Before 80 knots both the engines are stabilized at the takeoff thrust. Now, let's see the application of it. Why an additional thrust setting is necessary in tailwind or significant crosswind conditions. In tailwind and significant crosswind conditions, the airflow entering into the engines is modified. Some perturbations may appear downstream of the leading edge of the engine inlet and potentially cause an engine stall if the perturbed airflow enters the core of the engine. Typical airflow distortion affecting the fan and the engine core with associated airflow perturbations can be seen in these figures. The FCOM thrust setting procedure in the case of tailwind or significant crosswind is in two steps. Step 1 is to ensure engines increase their thrust symmetrically by using the stabilization step. Step 2 is acceleration of the aircraft with the pilot progressively increasing thrust from the stabilization step value to reach takeoff thrust. As the aircraft accelerates the relative wind resulting from the forward momentum counters the disturbed airflow conditions caused by crosswind or tailwind reducing the risk of engine stall and the risk of experiencing the associated thrust asymmetry. Why could aircraft engines accelerate asymmetrically at takeoff? On all jet engines, but particularly on high bypass ratio engines, the engine acceleration profile is not linear. It follows the engine control law that is defined to optimize the acceleration in a way that the risk of engine stall is reduced. It also takes into account the influence of the position of the engine installed on the aircraft and the effect on the airflow at the engine's inlet due to its proximity to the ground and the surrounding aircraft structure. Every engine has its own performance level due to manufacturing tolerances. In addition, engine performance evolves with time due to wear and aging. As a consequence, the acceleration profiles may slightly differ from one engine to another on an aircraft, even if fitted with new engines. Similarly, the idle thrust can slightly differ from one engine to the other, moving the acceleration profile to the left on the graph. Taking into consideration both of these parameters, if the flight crew applies the takeoff thrust directly from idle thrust, without doing any stabilization step, the difference in engine acceleration performance could cause a strong asymmetric thrust condition that could be difficult to counteract with nose while steering only, due to limited effectivity of the rudder at low speed. When the pilot sets thrust in two steps for takeoff, 
the stabilization step ensures that all engines reach a rotation speed value from where the increase of engine thrust will be almost identical to each other. On aircraft equipped with Rolls-Royce or IAE engines, a keep-out zone prevents stabilized engine operation in a specific N1E per range, when on ground below a certain speed to prevent fan instability. During the progressive application of the takeoff thrust after the stabilization step, the flight crew should ensure that the levers are advanced continuously and simultaneously. Moving the thrust levers too slowly may lead to asymmetric engine acceleration if one thrust lever is moved outside of the keep out zone before the other. Thank you for watching. Remember a good pilot is always learning. Signing off. is clear to Los Angeles International, fly runway heading, Kennedy 1.5 BME, right turn 100, and at 5, climb 5000, expect 30010, miss after, spot 3343. United 703, ADIS is Alpha, contact ground when you're ready to attack. Thank you very much, United 703.